Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Late Show. Welcome to The Late Show, everybody. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. The holiday season is in full swing already here in New York. The Christmas lights are burning bright, especially over at Fox News headquarters. <laughs> where last night, the Fox News Christmas tree was set on fire. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking, but the ghost of Hugo Chavez has an alibi. <laughs> Thankfully, no one was hurt. But we're not talking about a couple of toasted pine cones here. Take a look. Crispy! Kringles. Of course, this would never have happened if the tree had a gun. <laughs> Come on. You gotta give a squirrel, give a squirrel a gun or something like that. Fox News tried to warn us this was coming. Every time a store clerk says happy holidays, a Christmas tree bursts into flames. <laughs> Authorities arrested a suspect last night. Police say they believe he is homeless. And mental illness may have played a factor. Homeless and mentally ill? Oh, my God! The fire was set by Bill O'Reilly! <laughs> so, no picture available. So, it doesn't look like this holly jolly arsonist was politically motivated, but Fox News is still going to eight maids a milk it. <laughs> Here's a stocking stuff with their coverage from this morning. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, somebody burns down a Christmas tree. This is personal to you two at home now. The Fox Christmas tree vandalized. Arson. I know some people would like to simplify this to just a, a Christmas tree. Who sets a Christmas tree on fire? The Christmas tree, the holiday tree here in the square. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did a Fox anchor just say holiday tree? <laughs> what the? Am I? Keep it up, Deucey, and Ainsley's gonna set you on fire. <laughs> now, Fox clearly wanted to drive home the point that this fire was set intentionally, as Steve Deucey said. Apparently, the guy is still being interviewed by the arson squad. It's beginning to look a lot like arson. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like arson. <laughs> Everywhere you go, take a look at the tree, and then the flames are roaring once again. Deucey, stop, drop, roll. Thank you. A little Bing. You got a, a nice song. Touch of Bing, baby. Bing Crosby. The fire was particularly upsetting for the friends at Fox because the evergreen tree is, of course, a symbol of the eternal life given by Christ. Or as Ainsley put it, it's a tree that unites us, that brings us together. It's about the Christmas spirit. It is about the holiday season. Uh, it's it, about Jesus. It's about Hanukkah. <laughs> Ainsley, you're a gift from Jesus. <laughs> but I'm gonna... Bless your heart. Ainsley, I'm gonna go out on a burning limb and say this is not about Hanukkah. <laughs> if it was, the fire would have looked like this. <laughs> but, but, ah! <laughs> but on the other hand, maybe it is about Hanukkah, because I have a feeling that Fox will miraculously make this story last for eight days. <laughs> it's also time for Congress's favorite holiday tradition, nearly destroying the economy for no damn reason. That's right, it's almost debt ceiling -less when both houses of Congress have to raise the official borrowing limit or the U.S. defaults on its debt, currency becomes worthless, we're all left in the afterscape trading sheep, potable water, and children for Dogecoin. <laughs> but never fear, ladies and gentlemen, the situation is in the capable talons of Senate Minority Leader and <laughs> toddler filling his diaper on Santa's lap. <laughs> Mitch McConnell. McConnell wants to raise the debt ceiling, but he also wants to filibuster anything that moves. So he's come up with an ingenious strategy, getting 10 Republican senators to vote for a temporary fast-track process to allow Senate Democrats to act on their own to increase the debt limit with 51 votes. Yes, they're going to vote to allow someone else to vote to raise the debt ceiling. That way, no one can blame the Republicans if the United States continues to exist. It's the perfect crime. 
They're on, they're on track to pass it, but I refuse to give them any credit for doing the absolute bare minimum of not deliberately destroying the world economy. The debt ceiling should not even be a thing. Whose idea was it to give our government a built-in self-destruct mechanism? That's like having a microwave that has just three settings. Reheat, popcorn, and press me once an hour, I'll jump into the bathtub with you. <laughs> now, moving on to things that are actually happening. Scientists in South Africa just released the results of a study that found that Omicron seems to dull the power of the Pfizer vaccine, meaning that vaccinated people might be vulnerable to breakthrough infections. Boo! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm being told we actually have footage of a virus breakthrough. Oh! Omicron! Scientists, <laughs> big fans. See, oh, big yeah. fans. They, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Scientists were quick to clarify that while the results were somewhat worrisome, there's no cause for panic. Good. Because I wasn't panicking anyway. Maybe I should, but I'm so tired. <laughs> After five years of democracy burning like a Fox News Christmas tree and <laughs> two years of pandemic, my adrenal glands are as shriveled up as two craisins. <laughs> my fight or flight response has turned into caramel corn and Netflix. Besides, this is a preliminary study. How preliminary? They released the results in the highly respected medical journal, Twitter. <laughs> I look forward to the day when all medical studies debut on social media. Hey, TikTok fam, big news. Got this gorgeous new bag from Fendi. Can't wait to use it to hold my Nobel Prize because I cured cancer. Whoop, whoop, smash that follow button. <laughs> now, oh, you yeah. know, who knows? So we don't, we don't know a lot yet. But one thing is clear. The new variant is spreading fast. 21 states have now detected Omicron, including Texas, where Houston health authorities found it in Houston's wastewater by analyzing sewage. That's right. <laughs> just got real. <laughs> And that's just the Omicron officials are able to detect. Reportedly, scientists have just found a stealth version of Omicron that may be harder for PCR tests to track. And, and I'm being told we have an enlarged image of the stealth variant. <laughs> we're, we're, also, we're also learning more about how the virus is transmitted. The new study found that when exhaling, males produced 34% more aerosol than females. Classic man spread. <laughs> The virus <laughs> will spread anything. The virus is also more likely to be transmitted by loud talkers, but that singing is worse than talking. Finally, scientific proof that office karaoke night is killing you. <laughs> speaking of science, speaking of science, more science. Researchers in Hong Kong have developed the first ever COVID killing steel that can inactivate 99.99% .99 of the virus within six hours. That is fantastic. Also, didn't we learn months ago that COVID doesn't really spread via surfaces? <laughs> really sounds like these scientists found out about COVID two years ago, immediately locked themselves in a lab, and then just emerged like, we did it! Wait, <laughs> what do you mean it's airborne? Damn it! <laughs> well, I guess I'll go home and watch Quibi. What? I'm gonna write Governor Cuomo about this, huh? <laughs> I'd like to see what his brother Chris has to say about that. Gee <laughs> gee! <laughs> There's big news in Germany, the world's number one exporter of consonants. Yesterday <laughs> was the last day in power for former Chancellor Angela Merkel. Seen here screaming, help, my children have been turned into birds. <laughs> Merkel has now officially stepped down after 16 years. That's a really long run. I know that personally, because her first year in office was the first year of my old show, which begs the question, who aged it better? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Why? No. Wait. 
Why? Why am I? Wait a second. Why am I the one who looks like he spent years trying to prevent the collapse of the Greek economy? <laughs> the Germans held an Auf Wiedersehen ceremony for Merkel, and one of the songs that she requested a marching band play was Du hast den Farbfilm vergessen, or You Forgot the Color Film, a 1974 punk rock anthem by the East German artist Nina Hagen. Woo! <laughs> of course! Of course, Merkel has always been a little punk rock. Who can forget when she crowd surfed at the UN General Assembly? <laughs> so, who's stepping into Merkel's later hosen? Why, it's none other than Foreman German Vice Chancellor and guy saying who has two thumbs and also looks like a thumb, Olaf Scholz. Woo! Olaf, baby! Woo! Number one Olaf fan. When I say Olaf, you say Bundeskanzler. Olaf! Bundeskanzler! Olaf! Bundeskanzler! It's a musical language <laughs> that is not at all terrifying to hear chanted. <laughs> Flashbacks. Flashbacks. I watch too much History Channel. But Chancellor Schultz isn't university beloved. He's been criticized by an opposition member for grinning like a smurf. Hey, hey, that's not fair. He doesn't look like a smurf. He looks like he eats smurfs. <laughs> but Schultz said he didn't mind the comparison because smurfs are small, crafty, and always win. Nicely done, Olaf. Although I'm not sure I know a ton about smurfs is the biting comeback that you think it is. <laughs> oh, you think you won, but the joke's on you. I watch exclusively the kinder cartoons from the 1980s. Ah, victory. It's as sweet as strawberry shortcakes by the power of Grayskull. I am the Chancellor. <laughs> My guest is CBS News COVID expert, Dr. David Agus. But when we come back, I explain modern relationships, and then you still don't understand them. See you then.